Hello, Isabel. Cat people aren't real. You know that, right? Well, the other day I was just laying in my bed, drifting blissfully off into sleep when all of a sudden, boom, the basketball scene from Catwoman just jumped into my brain. And that's when I realized two things. Number one, I pissed the bed. And number two, I really just felt like watching Catwoman again. I don't know if it's because I really wanted to relive the train wreck of a movie that it is, or just to confirm that the basketball scene actually happened. And after I watched the movie, I didn't stop there. I decided to stream myself playing the Catwoman game on the PlayStation 2. Yes, I repeat, the Catwoman game. And all I really can say after watching the movie and playing the game is, um, anybody want a saucer of milk? There really isn't much that can describe the atrocity that is the movie and the game. And yes, I'm going to be talking about both today, so strap in. It's gonna be a good one. And I just want to mention here, I know there was a small community of people that do love this movie regardless of all the hate that it got. I do not hate this movie because Halle Berry is a bad actor. Personally, I don't really think she did that bad of acting. I just think she had very, very poor dialogue and very poor direction. Honestly, the only movie I could really compare to Catwoman is The Shaggy Dog with Tim Allen. Yes, I am serious. And the main reason is because this movie does not feel like it's a superhero movie. It just feels like a movie about a cat trapped in a woman's body. And trust me, you'll understand further in the video what I mean. And also, one other thing before we start. I realize this movie has a lot of woman empowerment in it, and it has a great message about women being independent and all that different stuff. I realize this, but at the same time, a good message never really means it's a good movie. And you'll understand why if you watch the whole video. You are gonna watch the whole video. Right? So the movie starts out with the origin story of Catwoman, how she came to be. And the intro sequence of the movie just starts out with a bunch of poorly photoshopped images of cats on like Egyptian pictures. And spoiler alert, her origin story ain't nothing to meow at. <laughs> so the main character is Patience, a struggling artist who is working for an ad company. So she works for a guy who makes beauty products and he's coming out with a great new product called Buelene, which is literally anti-aging cream. And it, it, it actually is, you know, it's not like the fake stuff they have in the market. So while the boss man is fighting with his wife, Patience walks in and then he just kind of yells at her for putting the wrong shade of red? Oh, what? And then he proceeds to make fun of her clothes, tells her she needs a manicure, and then fires her. I have no idea why I expected your art to show better taste than your wardrobe. Oh, and do try and get a manicure, will you? Look, 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 don't get me wrong. I get it. Rich people are assholes a lot of times, but Jesus, they really just went all out with this one. But anyway, his wife convinces him to give her another chance, but she only has until midnight tomorrow to finish it. So now we're back at the apartment. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So this happens a lot in the movie where the camera just kind of like rotates and zooms in at the same time. It's fine here and there, but they do it all the time throughout the movie and it gets a little bit annoying. Oh yeah, and that whole camera zoom thing, that doesn't just happen in the movie. They decided to put that in the game as well. I guess it was such a unique and crazy zoom, they had to put it in the game too. So literally the whole beginning of the movie is just, hey, Patience, she's a super quiet, shy girl who doesn't want anyone to bother her. So then Patience does something very stupid. There is a cat that is following her around and somehow the cat ended up on a windowsill outside of her apartment building. And instead of just waiting for the cat to jump down or grabbing something for the cat to grab onto or even calling the fire department, she decides to climb out of a four-story window to grab the cat. So then Patience does something really stupid and she steps on an AC window unit to grab the cat. Oh no, it's falling now, who would have thought? But then Sexy Cop comes out of nowhere to save her life. But like Cinderella, she runs off to work and accidentally drops her wallet. Man, I wonder if there's gonna be some like good old fashioned romance with these two or something. <laughs> So Patience finishes her ad and tries to get it to the boss before midnight. But whoa, uh -oh, the doors are closed. So she just decides to walk into the back door. You know, every multi-million dollar company, they always leave their back doors open. I don't care that the FDA never saw the, the headaches and the, the, the nausea and the, the fainting spells. Those are symptoms I can live with. Did they just like take five different cuts and put it together? What was that? So the big twist of this Buelene product is that it will not make you age, 
but it will give you headaches, nausea, fainting, addiction, and if you stop using it for too long, your face turns into this. <coughs> this is why the bad guys just don't make sense to me. If all of this stuff happens when you use the cream, then everyone will find out and then the company will get shut down. So not only do they realize that all of this stuff is happening with the Buelene, but they just don't care because they said people will buy it anyway. Like, I mean, come on, they, they can't be that stupid, right? But anyway, Patience makes it inside and ends up overhearing them talking about the face thing and then they kill her. Seriously, they kill her over something that everyone's gonna find out anyway. But then after she dies, the cat from earlier breathes on her, and now she's Catwoman. Now, I, I don't know if this is how the comics are, but I'm just assuming it must be, right? Because, you know, movies, they would never tarnish a good origin story from the comics, right? A movie would never do that, right? And now she has all the powers that a cat does, like having a CGI seagull zoom in super close to your face and go, ah! you know? Cat stuff. So she crawls back to her apartment. Instead of just going through the front door, she decides to um break through her window. I, I guess it's just what cats do, am I right? So she ends up finding out who the cat's owner is with a fortune cookie note on her collar. And then this happens. You should come back anytime. I'm always here. So um um this... This is what I was talking about when I mentioned that the movie is kind of like the shaggy dog because it more focuses on cat stereotypes and less on the fact that she has, you know, super senses, super agility, super reaction speed. They just focus on dumb cat stereotypes like this. Just make her climb or do a flip or something. Come on. So now she's back to work and her boss is furious at her and I guess completely oblivious that she died last night. But now since she is Catwoman, she got claws. I'm sorry for every second I wasted working for an untalented, unethical egomaniac like you. So she gets fired, starts hissing at some dogs, and then her friend passes out. Looks like she's been using too much beauty be 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 cream? Beauty be Fuck, I already forgot the name. So now, after long wait, comes the greatest scene in film history. The scene that I think about alone in the dark when no one's around. The scene that makes me quiver in fear. The basketball scene. So Tom the cop is giving all these kids some good motivational speech, you know, because he's a cop who also loves kids. God, he's a real catch. So the kids are outside playing some b-ball and when all of a sudden the kids tell them to 1v1. And then what proceeds is basically what adults would do at a club when they're drunk, but instead of at a club, they're doing it 1v1 basketball with a bunch of kids watching them. I mean, honestly, this kind of reminds me of how I met my wife. You know, she shook her butt at me. I showed my abs a little bit, like, boom, bam. Love at first basketball. And I just want to mention, doing this... God damn it. Doing this... It's not, it's not hard, okay? We're trying to showcase someone who has superpowers, and you're making her... Do that? Huh? Like, let's spit, spit it on her finger or something. Well, what? I don't know. There's many options with basketball. And you're just, just gonna do that? Oh, great. She's eating tuna, you know, cause she's a cat. Oh yeah, and when she's talking on the phone with her friend, she just, you know, starts hopping around, you know? Cause she's a cat and all. So it looks like the people next door are having a party, but now, you know, since she's Catwoman, she's got something to say. Now, um, call me crazy, wacky, perhaps, but um, that is not the phrase that I would imagine be coming out of a 40-year-old man in a leather jacket. That just sounds like something a 10-year-old kid would say to me when I ask them where their parents are. <laughs> Get a life, loser. I'm just trying to picture getting in a bar fight with a leather jacket man and then him looking at me and saying, 
Get a life, loser. So anyway, uh, she goes to the party and just sprays seltzer water on the speakers to shut off the music. It's Catwoman. She has superpowers. Why is she just spraying water on speakers? Make her do something cool. What a waste of a movie. So then like a ninja, she chops off all of her hair and steals someone's bike. And Jesus Christ, I'm going to have a stroke from those cuts. So now she's just going to rob a jewelry store like, like I, I know catwoman's supposed to be someone who you know steals things but what she's just like hey i'm i'm catwoman now i'm just gonna go steal shit oh yeah that's not all it just so happens that someone is breaking into that exact jewelry store at the exact same time you boys thought you could come in here and steal all these beautiful things what a perfect idea Wow, that was unbearable. <laughs> Wait, is this a fucking dog? God damn it. So anyway, the dudes who are robbing the jewelry store have shotguns, you know, like every person who robs a jewelry store, and they just start blasting. Wow. So then we get the first fight scene, and every fight scene is basically just nausea by how many cuts they have. So she wakes up with a bunch of jewelry on her bed and ends up taking everything back except a ring and a big ass necklace. I mean, come on. She isn't really gonna openly wear a ring that was just stolen from a jewelry store last night. I mean, she can't be that stupid. Oh my God. She's actually that stupid. What do we call her? Cat chick. No, no, cat broad. So then she ends up Googling stuff about cats and finds out that Midnight the cat is poorly photoshopped in every single image she looks at. How convenient! So she goes to the cat lady's house and then the cat lady pushes her off a ledge because she always lands on all fours. God damn it. So anyway, the lady tells her that she got her powers from an ancient cat goddess. And now that she finally accepts that she's Catwoman, she does a little cat walk, pun intended. And also while at the same time, she just happens to find the perfect Catwoman costume. All right. Anyway, her new goal now is to turn into CGI and find out who killed her and why. So she follows a man to a club and chugs some milk, you know, cause that's what cats do. Did I just hear something about a cat drinking milk? It's Peter Jones. I mean, yes, that's what cats do. Oh, come on, pig, you're wrong. Oh. Well, actually, contrary to popular belief, most cats are actually lactose intolerant. So it's really bad for their digestive tract to actually drink milk. So cats should not drink milk. But you guys want to know something that you could drink that can make you turn into a cat? Oh, that's right, yep. G Fuel. That's the thing I drink all the time for me to turn into a cat. You will literally anamorph yourself into a cat. Just drink G Fuel, use code PIG to get 30% off your order and you can become a cat today. So Catwoman just starts kind of just flinging her whip around and then she kicks the guy outside and questions him. Uh, cat got your tongue. Oh no. Oh, oh no, oh no, oh no, please, please, oh God, no. So the guy tells her it was Buelene and then she just so happens to walk in on a scientist who was just shot. And then some dude just so happens to see her making it look like she was the one who did it. God damn it, this movie has a lot of very specific coincidences. So now people around the city think Catwoman is a murderer. God damn, this movie's just moving really fast now. So anyway, back to the hot cop from earlier. It looks like the cop has noticed that the same handwriting is on the coffee mug that Patience gave him and the bag the Catwoman used to give back the jewelry. And what happens next is honestly just, it's just beyond human understanding. I can't explain it. But this first one, the broad spacing of the letters, indicative of loneliness, and the O reaching out, insecure, almost angry. This person doesn't like to play by all the rules. If you put these two women in the same room, you're gonna have one hell of a party. I want you to uh, understand something here. You're telling me right now, this man can nail someone's personality to a T solely from their handwriting. Like, honestly, I feel like this movie shouldn't be about Catwoman and should just be about this man. Or wizard, perhaps. So after a little bit of a Hannah Montana transition. So Tom and Patience are on a Ferris wheel at a carnival, and all of a sudden, the Ferris wheel gets jammed. So instead of trusting the Ferris wheel guy with it, the cop ends up jumping down from the top level to help. Frankie. Jesus, 
woman, your son's in peril. Like, he could die or at least break a leg. Like, show a little bit of concern here. So anyway, Catwoman save boy. Cop ends up unjamming the Ferris wheel by, by jamming a wrench inside of the jam. I, I'm still kind of confused on what really happened to the Ferris wheel here. Call the cops. You're not going to believe this. Is he an NPC? What was that? So Catwoman ends up confronting Mr. Hedare and then a bunch of cops chase her down. Then Tom happens to be the only one who catches her and then they have a really, really awkward fight. It's bad. The entire dialogue of this fight is a bunch of one-liners. You think this is some kind of game? Yeah, now we're playing. You are playing, I'm at work. Seems like you love your job. Don't I get dinned it first? I'll feed you in your cell. <laughs> Careful. That cable hits us, we'll bluff right. I knew I felt a spark between us. <clears throat> Not on the first date. Don't flatter yourself, lady. I'm taken. Does she know about us? There's no us. Okay, boys. Show of hands. Who can see in the dark? I can. Every line. Every single one. That, that's just incredible. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, two things. Mr. Hedare hits woman. And also, Buelene makes your skin as hard as rock. Buelene works wonders, doesn't it? Got it. What 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 am I even watching anymore? Am I watching a movie? What, where am I? What, who what it, who am I? I just forgot everything. I, who, who, what am I? What am I doing here? So Patience eats some fish, you know, on account of the whole cat situation she has going on there. Catwoman. Mm -hmm. She kissed me. I'm sorry, can we get a really quick rewind here? <laughs> Too bad. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not sure if that's what people would consider a kiss, if I'm gonna be honest here. So now they end up having epic adult sex. Yeah. I have that sometimes. But then next morning, Tom finds one of Catwoman's diamond nails. Then he starts piecing, piecing the puzzle together. He's figuring it out. Oh, hey, look, a Nokia phone with video calling. Did that exist? So anyway, Mrs. Hedare ends up calling patients and telling her that she found evidence of Buelene being toxic. But little secret, Mrs. Hedare is a little bit of a lying bitch. Oh yeah, also the cop discovers that Patience is Catwoman. That was easy. Oh, and Mr. Hedare's dead. Yeah, uh, his wife killed him and then framed it on Catwoman. So yeah, that's uh, that's a little bit of a problem. Okay, how the hell did like 30 cops just appear out of nowhere? They're there in under 30 seconds. Like, it's not like these cops were on standby. It's not like the cops are in on it. Like, they, they, had, they had to drive. They had to drive from the police station and it took 30 seconds. So anyway, she goes incognito and shows up at her apartment and Tom is waiting there to arrest her. So then she does what every strong individual does. And cries like a little baby. Mr. Hot Cop, please listen to me. We had sex last night, Mr. Hot Cop. Please let me go. I promise. I'm a good girl. So they lock her up, but you know, they forgot one key detail. She's a cat. She can squeeze through everything because that makes sense. That That is, um, I guess that's just a power. She can squeeze her organs together and I'm, I'm i'm just not gonna question it i'm not gonna question it. i'm just she did it good job so tom ends up hearing out patience and goes to confront mrs hader about the incident and wowie zowie she shoots him in the arm because he calls her out but catwoman saves him and now it's time for the final boss fight baby catwoman versus lady with really hard skin Th that's it she don't got no superpowers. She She's literally a bullet sponge. And that's basically how this fight plays out. Catwoman just beats the ever-living shit out of this woman. And she's like, I, I, I didn't feel that. Why don't you punch harder next time? I didn't feel that at all. And I'll admit this last fight's honestly the best one out of the show because it's literally just Catwoman doing kicks and flips and just beating the shit out of her. And then she wins by Mrs. Hedair falling off of a building to her death. So in the end, everyone finds out it was Mrs. Hedair who was the bad guy. And then Catwoman just kind of leaves Tom. You know, the whole 
I have a job to do. I don't want you to get hurt kind of cliche thing. There's a lot left unanswered here. So we talked about the movie. Let's talk a little bit about the game then, shall we? Now, obviously, it's confusing in the first place that this movie even got a game. I mean, it's not like the movie did well to warrant this. The production budget was 100 million and they only made 80 million. That's what people in the movie industry call bad. So this game was released on the PS2 and basically was just a copy paste of the story. So I don't really need to bore you with the details of the story. But this game is just the most frustrating train wreck of a game. There is no camera control. This is on the PlayStation 2, yet there is zero camera control. Can I just climb up this? Can I really just not climb back? <laughs> I don't know if they just loved their camera cuts in the movie and their weird swoopy zoom in so much that they decided they wanted to control the camera for the player. <laughs> but you kind of just got to hope that the camera pans the right direction. And one big problem is the game never really tells you where to go or what to do. So it's kind of impossible to play this game without a walkthrough because the environment, everything is just one color. There's not really like a variation or pops of color to like lead you to believe you need to go this direction. Everything looks exactly the same. Okay. Um, switches in a s Look at this. Look at this. Tell me, tell me how in the hell am I supposed to know that that is a, a thing I'm supposed to do? But let's move on to the fighting in this game. If you would really call it that because how Catwoman defeats her enemies is not by you know knocking them out beating them up doing some cool like hack and slash type Catwoman bayonetta type shit no she just kicks her enemies into garbage cans I mean because you know women they can't really beat up men so she kind of just gotta kick him into the trash to win am I right you need to be recycled you need to be recycled what does that even mean? Please. Jesus! Dude, that is so that is so utterly annoying. Like this is so stupid. <laughs> You're heading for the junk bin. What the fuck? What is this? Ah, what is this? What is she doing? And there are new moves and abilities you get throughout the game, and my favorite is the one where you literally just press a button. And then you seduce the guards with your boobas. Pose. Send the guys into a frenzy by showing off your curves. Hey, big boy. You like this? Hey, big boy. Yeah, I fucking like that, huh? Hey, big boy. You like this? Yeah, you fucking like that? Are those bazoingas? And sometimes, if you're lucky, they get scared and then jump into the trash can for you. Come on. They won't get in. Right in the litter box. This was an actual game. Oh yeah, and one other thing that is just absolutely incredible about this game is this. <sighs> Is it seriously Halle Berry breathing? Listen. Go. You want to play my game? <laughs> yes. Well, well, yes, Halle Berry. I do want to play your game. Uh. So many diamonds, so little time. All right. Couldn't get enough, could you? <laughs> decisions, decisions. Mm. That needs a closer look. I'll claw my way to the top. That uh, gets my curiosity going. Oh my god. Let the cat out. <sighs> Thanks, Midnight. Don't ever do that again. I feel like these are one of those games that pervy dads get for their children so they can kind of just get a little bit horny over hearing Jennifer Hale say that she wants a saucer of milk. Buy a girl a saucer of milk.
Did, did she basically say that she needs some milk? This is what happens when you're idle, by the way. This is what happens when you're idle. <sighs> also, the level designs are just made to piss you off. I can only compare some of these levels to getting over it. Because you do so much climbing, so much time figuring out where to go, you climb to the tippity top of an area, and then you just fall and start over. Hard to see. I. No, 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 no. No. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. Oh. Oh, my God. Oh. 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 This game is nothing short of just torture. Oh, yeah. And not to mention the boss fights. I know you're thinking, oh, the boss fights, you have to, you know, actually hit them, right? Uh. Wrong. The first boss fight you encounter. You literally cannot hit him. You can't. You just gotta kind of like, like nudge him over to something or bait him over to something in order to take damage from the environment and not from you, a super powered cat woman. You don't do the damage. You just trick the guy into getting hurt. <laughs> This is seriously how I, are you, are you kidding me? I can't use my regular moves, I just have to use this. Uh, I'm actually gonna die. I can't do anything when I'm getting shot. Just shoot her. Yeah, take it onto those barrels. What's even the point of this game? But the movie and the game are both just kind of a train wrecks really so if you guys want to see more of me torturing myself playing Catwoman, please hop on over to my bionic pig live channel where i upload highlights of my streams i don't really know why so many movies had very poor spin-off games which is why i am actually planning on making a series dedicated to that same idea i'm going to be streaming a bunch of terrible games that were based on movies like zathura shrek the Polar Express, and so much more all on my Twitch channel, and then I'm going to end up reviewing those said games on this channel. Let me know in the comments below if you like this idea. I'm gonna kind of trickle my way into this just so I don't scare off everyone, but I personally am really excited about doing this. But we are officially at the end of the video, and all that's left to do is to take a break, subscribe to my channel, go over to my Twitch and follow, and drink a saucer of milk. Bye.